Hello, hello, hey now, welcome to Cockblock, the coalition of craft beer lovers of Kentucky. My name is Jeff, a.k.a. Dr. Fabulous, and I have with me here my co-host. Hello, Matt. This is Matt here with Cockblock, and we got, uh, we got, uh, Andrew Bishop with Very us. Very special guest. Hey, yeah, hey. how are you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you all? All right. Uh, Mr. Bishop here is from Ethereal Brewing, and we got a lot of cool stuff coming up with them, like the funky farmhouse, uh, fest that we had we had kind of talked about the last show and we got some other releases and a lot of good stuff in the pipeline but um before we get started what have what have you been drinking man besides have, champagne and champagne man yeah caviar i was in the club were you in the club last night i thought I the club that. you were in the club is that how, is that how you say i it? saw the you club? getting table service at the club it's, i think it's called bottle service bottle service excuse is me that- <laughs> See, I don't even know what I'm talking I'm, about. Yeah, I'm not really into it, so I don't know. That's, that's what I'm told, anyway. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good beers going. A lot of good beers coming through town lately. Yeah. Have you tried any? No. No. I don't. I don't like beer. No. A lot of Crooked Save came through. <laughs> the Crooked Save stuff. Blackberry Farms. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's just I think it's just too sour. I don't think it's bad, but it's just Some. It's too much for but me. But I had um, last night Le Petit, one of the Le Petit sours, the blueberry. Yeah. yeah. Very very good. Very fresh. Yeah. And they, they lower like price a- point too. Well, define lower price point. Cam, I'm on. But I mean, radio. like, like, is it just <laughs> half like, the price of the normal? <laughs> really? <laughs> sort of, yeah. Okay, because uh-huh. those are those are pricey bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I picking up here? Okay. Let's see. Testing, 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 Looks testing. Like testing. It. Okay. The, the, the needles are moving. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, man. I uh, the uh, I've actually been meaning to get down to uh, Ethereal and try this new sour that you guys got on. Uh, dog days. Dog yeah, days. yeah. Which one? What is? What's in that one? Uh, dog days. That's an uh, an American sour that we did. Uh, I think it's sitting right around five point two percent. We use some guava, which is a nice kind of tropical fruit flavor to it. Yeah. And then uh, we dry hopped it with uh, about four pounds of mosaic. Okay. Kind of give it a little bit of a hoppiness. That's really where you get a lot of that haze between the the guava yeah. and the uh, the dry hop that we have. That in beer there. is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very uh, good. Well, it's a lot not of people the prettiest thing in the glass. <laughs> it, it's this peachy, it's hazy, muddy kind of thing, but then you taste it, and you're just all tropical fruit and a little bit of hot, that kind of hop thing that goes on with the tropical fruit. Yeah, well, the really last good. one, the the trop- the actual tropical goes, I thought that mm. was amazing. I love that one. Yeah, we, we uh very happy with how that one came out this time. It it lost a little bit of that sourdoughy smell to it. Yeah. It has a little bit of a cleaner finish, I feel like, and uh, it, it came out real nice. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't look the same. It's not as... Uh, pretty as when we had the dragon fruit in there but yeah it just didn't seem right to to pay that much to put dragon fruit in there when yeah. all it did was affect the color it, yeah it, it well it actually like no taste. i almost thought it tasted better with yeah. without the dragon fruit in there and i don't think i was alone well that, I, I tried the the dragon fruit uh puree straight out of the bag and i really just tasted my finger yeah so yeah I, no. straight out of the bag huh this chug I, I just imagine him like cutting it open and just like pouring it on his face and just like taking a shower with it. That's what I would have that done. That would be an expensive shower. <laughs> <laughs> just followed up by a very shower. sticky, expensive yeah. shower. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. I need. Is it still on right now? It is. It is. We uh, we had I think started off with about eight barrels of each one of them. So mm-hmm. we we not really distributing that one. Kind of want to have that more of a, a tap room only sort of thing. Yeah. Just because tropical fruits are pushing that price mm-hmm. point up yeah. with it and everything and. It just gives people a reason to kind of come down, see what we're doing, and it's yep. always nice to be able to enjoy it in the tap room where it's made. Yeah, okay. so that you kind of get the full experience with it. Well, cool, man. Yeah, I definitely need to go down there. I uh, I went up. I actually took Friday off, um, uh, and it was it was very tough to do. But we went to uh, me and Kendra went to Cincinnati, and uh, we drank a bunch of stuff up there. They did a mm. release, uh, Chacao release over at uh, Triple Digit. I thought that was on Sunday. The release. Uh, I think it was Saturday. We actually went up Friday. Well, yeah, it, we went up the day before. Well, there were two because if you were, I guess, if you're a club member on yeah. Sunday and if you're doing the regular on Saturday, it seems like half of Lexington was in beer drinkers anyway. Yeah, we're in Cincinnati this uh, weekend drinking beer and buying yeah. uh, Listerman's. Yeah, and, and we had we had planned it for a couple of weeks, and and I just we I like to go up there once a month anyway. Just Did you take your kid with? No. Yeah, I don't I'm, think, not, I'm sure what happened. To I don't think kid. you can have kids in the Listerman tap room. No, I, I think she was she was okay. I can't remember what you happened. You just left her, it by herself. Well, yeah, she's already two and a half. She needs yeah. to start learning so these life skills of like survival. 
bowl of food next to a pair of diapers. Yeah, yeah. Well, Turn I, just, on the TV. I, I just show her where the food's at, and I say, I point to it, and I'm like, right. cereal. And she's like, I got it. I got, I got, I'm good, Daddy. I told you. I'm working on that with my six month, but she hasn't quite picked up yet. <laughs> yeah. But we're, we're starting early so that I can I was, I I was can told when they start crawling that they're self-sufficient. Oh, yeah, they're is done. That, is that That's the way it, it is? They're done, man. Yeah. When, you, when I started crawling... That's what Jeff said. He used to have six kids, though. Now he's down to two. So no, you, It's like the Middle Ages. You don't keep them all. You lose some <laughs> along the way. Yeah, yeah that's, that's normal. Right. That's part of the process. <laughs> yeah. you, have, you have a lot because you know a few are going to you know, yeah. fall that's, by the wayside. That's the yeah. reason it's survival of the fittest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, These are the ones that will be my, my progeny. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. It's, that's what it said in that book. Um, <laughs> that book? <laughs> what to expect when you're How to expecting. weed out your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 7, How to Weed Out Your Kids. Wr- written by J- Dr. Jeff. <laughs> Uh, well, we had uh, I, I tried some of those chacaos. That stuff's mm-hmm. good, man. It's it's so sweet. Have you ever had any of those chacao beers from Triple Digit? I, I haven't yet. No, they're very very sweet. It's like I mean, it's like sugar in a glass. Um, but uh, I like the uh, uh, Mad Tree does the psychopathy. Oh, that's where you got. IPA. That's where you got the. Uh, yeah, they do the blood orange the blood version, orange. which I had. I had that when they first. Um, made it i guess last year or something like that it was draft only i brought back a couple of growlers i happened to uh find it over at cappy's and i love that stuff i think it's really good i came back with with almost a case of that and it's just a regular ipa but the fruited ipas mm-hmm. there's a lot of people doing that stuff nowadays i really enjoy it so it, it seems to be the big thing yeah accentuating some of those hot flavors by adding in the yeah. fruit itself yeah, so there's already grapefruity flavors but now they're adding exactly more right. grapefruit yeah. more yeah. pineapple yeah. Yeah. more orange exactly yeah so uh so no one's gonna get scurvy if you're a beer drinker basically <laughs> well i'm sure we can find a way yeah. if you really want scurvy i mean i can oh that's sure citrus keeps yeah. it out man can you make a scurvy beer <laughs> oh we can <laughs> oh we can do it yeah we did it we did it on accident at first we didn't think anybody wanted it but now that you're you're offering yeah can do anything we'll open up another deep and uh, <laughs> that, so. well uh yeah i went up to uh, ryan guys too mm-hmm. i always love that place um beautiful venue i ran into uh jeff beagle from I country boy picture, yeah it's like i can't find him around lexington uh you know one of the owners of country boy and i ran into him at the rooftop bar at ryan guys which i didn't even know they had a rooftop bar Out of it's all like, places at ryan guys time. yeah yeah we had to go like an hour and a half mm-hmm. north i'm like hey i know you and well, then, it's one thing so. to find him in cincinnati it's another to yeah, on the top of it. I won't tell you how we met up at the rooftop of a building, but it well, was... Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> he probably called you a stalker and maced you. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I Calm just I couldn't, I couldn't hear anything. You still have that, that Jeff Beagle poster in your bedroom? Oh, oh sorry. Oh, you weren't supposed to say that out loud. So, what so you... that was the only places you hit? Uh, yeah, I think we we hit a couple others. There are a lot of new breweries popping up all over that Cincinnati area. I wanted to go to uh, Nine Giant. It was a little bit too far north. What's the one that starts with a W? It's by Jungle Gyms East. Uh, Wonder something or they just opened recently. Um, There's another one called Municipal, I think, that opened in July. I'm sure I'd recognize. There's tons that just they're just popping up all over that. Um, yeah. That Cincinnati. Yeah, area. they're hopping, man. They're up there. We need We're to catch up. up. We're we catching up. We are catching up. We're we are catching we up. Are, Did you catch are. that? Did anybody else catch that? That's but, uh, Maybe yeah. we can talk a little about the origins of Ethereal. How Ethereal came to be. How did you guys come together, put this thing together, and uh, decide on these specific styles, which are different from just about any other brewery, it seems, in Lexington, and Kentucky, for that matter. Yeah, I mean, we, we were definitely happy to, to see that the beers that we enjoyed drinking and making were not already being produced on a regular basis. <clears throat> uh, but to, to kind of start from the beginning... Uh, Brandon and I, uh, we have known each other since high school. So, Brandon Flown. Brandon Flown. Yeah. Yep. He's uh, main beer. He's the other guy with maker. Er. He, he's not here because he's still working. And this is my, <laughs> <laughs> this is my way of working. Yeah. <laughs> so we we have gone our separate ways just a little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've known each other for thirteen, almost fourteen years now, okay. and uh, we actually got started. Uh, into beer in uh, two separate ways. We kind of went our, our separate ways at, at UK mm-hmm. for just a little bit. And uh, I have an uncle that uh, worked at Summit Brewing out in Minnesota. Okay, yeah. And then uh, when I went to go visit some family back when I was 19, uh, my family's from Nebraska, made a, a special visit to go see him in Iowa. He was brewing his second batch uh, for a nano brewery that he was opening up. Yeah. And uh, a little little place uh, called Northwood, Iowa, has a uh, one-stop sign instead of one-stop light. Really? So, okay. uh, really small place, but he opened up, he was opening up a nano brewery, and uh, he had just gotten a brew magic when he was on his second batch when I showed up, and uh, I was able to kind of help him out a little bit, kind of take it in. First time I'd seen anybody brew beer, again, only 19. Yeah. But 
it looked really easy on the surface. Uh, that and the laws, since there's no alcohol in any of the beer ingredients, you can buy everything to make beer before you can buy beer. Sure. Right. So I I come back down to Lexington and get on uh, get on a website, a little homebrew uh, shop, get all that stuff shipped to me, and next thing you know, uh, 125 State Street here in Lexington, just started brewing in the brewing in the kitchen, fermenting in the closet, and yeah. <laughs> didn't have to find somebody 21 to buy me beer so yeah exactly was, right yeah it was really just more so for the nostalgia of having it and saying yeah. that i can make it. it yeah it wasn't any kind of aspiration outside of enjoying beer as an underage uh, person <laughs> well, that's, we all did. that's everybody's yeah, aspiration everybody. when you're in college yeah uh brandon on the other hand uh when uh, we graduated high school his family moved out to Asheville, north carolina which uh, I'm sure pretty much anybody listening knows uh, about yeah. Asheville. Yeah. Um, half of Lexington beer drinkers are not all go to Asheville every other I think half of seems. the citizenship of Asheville is actually Lexingtonians. Lexington, yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> funny. I, I randomly went out there uh, to, to just grab some beer and ran into probably about five, six, yeah. seven cockblockers. Yeah. Just walking on the street to a brewery. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> It's our Disney World. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, when uh, his family moved out there, he has an older brother that's actually the uh, the tap room manager at Burial. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when Brandon would kind of go and visit family out in Nashville, uh, he brewed his first two, three batches with his brother. Okay. And so when he came back to Lexington after brewing a little bit, uh, we ran into each other really at a house party of a mutual friend. And I had a little six pack of my beer. He had mm-hmm. a six pack of his beer. And we got to talking and we said well since we've already known each other and we're both making beer let's start brewing together yeah i'll so, take yours if you drink mine pretty much yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh we we kind of uh merged our our little homebrew kits together and uh we started doing some all grain stuff in the kitchen uh, a little turkey fryer in the backyard and Tried to do the math of, uh, you know, batch sparging and stuff. Yeah. Uh, how, how much uh, strike water, how much mm-hmm. uh, uh, sparge water that you need at what temperature, and pretty much never hitting the temperature that we yeah. wanted to because algebra was neither one of our strengths. Kids, <laughs> you see why you need math. <laughs> yeah. This is coming from Dr. Facebook, by the way. <laughs> I know. I'm telling <laughs> Well, now you got Google. It's like, what's 8 plus 12? I can't do that. I only Just got 10 in, fingers. Type it into Google. Yeah, like, exactly. Can, yeah. Can't do that with beer math? I don't know. You probably could. Like, yeah. What's the sparge water temperature of, like, the typical... Siri. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Siri. Well, they got, like, they actually... Uh, Amazon makes one now. Uh, our buddy Bradford was showing me. Mm-hmm. You should walk around the kitchen and be like, how many gallons are in, in you know, a cup of water? Which is, I guess, How like many gallons in a cup of water? Like, zero. 0.03. Zero. Yeah. That would be the answer. Yeah. I can Anyways, say that right off the top of my head. Yeah. We're hi- hijacking that. <laughs> right. Oh, no. It's, it's it so, really... You, you need to pay attention. You wouldn't believe how much biology chemistry that we have gone back to teach ourselves yeah in all of this um but yeah we we were really just doing it for ourselves friends and family just to see if we could make beer uh we still didn't have any kind of aspirations to to turn it into a business yeah but uh i was uh, going to school for psychology mm-hmm. uh brandon was going to school for political science so again Think about what you want to do before you go to college. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> because it took us about four years of not knowing what we wanted to do before we figured out it was going to be beer. Yeah. Um, but then we, we were kind of realized that you look at Asheville, you look at the, the population size, and you look at how many breweries, then you look at Lexington. This was still probably about a year or two before Country Boy opened up that we decided we wanted to start focusing on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just we didn't have the means. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are very expensive projects. Yeah. Uh, 304 stainless steel is not cheap. Yeah. The fabrication of it is it's not cheap either. Yeah. So we uh, we bought ourselves a little uh, Sabco Brew Magic so that we could uh, take it to another level as far as uh, consistency. It was a rim system, so we're, we're able to, to uh, fly sparge. We're able to... Work a little bit more about getting our keeping our efficiencies consistent. Work on uh, you know being able to reproduce recipes because we understand that that's really the hardest part of brewing. It's not coming up with a great recipe. It's, it's being able to make it a second time, over third and time, over again. Time. again. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you know, guys have been doing it for how many years now? Um, has it been three? Has two? It been, has been two? It's sneaking up on two. two. With yeah. This. Uh, yeah. Brandon and I, we've been brewing together uh, eight years now. Okay. So as far as our our brewing together, 
Uh, it's it's very extensive uh, yeah. as far as have being open to the public. It's sneaking up on two, on two years, years, November two years 29th. Already. Yeah, I, it seems like it's, it hasn't been that long already, but you think, I remember the first year anniversary and the second one's right. coming I mean, The out oldest out. brewery oh, in awesome, town man. is not even five yet. Yeah, well... Define oldest brewery. Not counting Altec. Oh, no. Okay. We're, yeah. There's always like a like an asterisk there. Like we don't. Not count, counting Altec. Not counting Altec. No yeah. offense, Altec. We're just yeah. not counting. You. Yeah. Please don't send your goons down to my house to break my kneecaps. I understand you're an actual. Mean brewery. tap rooms. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't okay. say anything. <laughs> no, yeah. just mean tap rooms. The oldest tap rooms. Okay. All, we'll say oldest tap room. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Because you guys are making a lot of really good stuff. So yeah, as far mm. as like uh, why stays uh, on styles, it's it was really something that. Uh, you know, I, I think with my uncle being in the craft beer industry, it kind of got us, and with Brandon's family being in Asheville, it got us into these other beer styles really early. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, we had Saison DuPont back when we were first doing uh, our home brewing together. That's yeah. a, that it's a major influential beer. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, just, you know, going down the Belgian Isle, somebody... We, we were smart enough to listen to somebody that knew more about beer than us sure. at that time and, you know, try to immerse ourselves into these other, you know, somebody tells you a little bit about Belgian and beer, mm-hmm. there's a lot that goes to it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, so we figured if we go down the Belgian aisle at Liquor Barn or where have you, uh, you can find a lot of a lot of really neat beer that hasn't really taken its roots into uh, American craft brewing yet. Yeah. Especially at that time, eight years ago. Especially in Kentucky. Yeah. I mean, be, being able to find it in Kentucky, it, it was definitely 90% chance it was import. I mean, yeah. we see people trying to brew the Saison or brewing a Saison here or there, but never... We have yet to see until Ethereal, really, a brewery that has a... Bulk. You walk into Ethereal on any day, and you're going to see a number of Saisons on the board. Yeah. Right? Or, or yeah. similar styles of Saison. You know, yeah. Grisette. Who else has done a Grisette in Kentucky? Yeah. Right? Which is the light version. So, I mean, there's all kinds of really interesting things that you yeah. guys are doing on I really that no one else the, is doing. I really enjoyed the beer de all did. And, yeah. uh, but you don't... You know, you're not limited to that, obviously. No. You know, right. you your IPAs, and we got the Bobby and the Yaga style. And, and a wit beer, like and browns. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, we, what we really like uh about our brewing and our brewing philosophy is that you know we want to do what we enjoy and you know we always kind of have that that uh, apple approach uh as far as you know apple's philosophy is you don't really know what you want until i tell you what you want that's right yeah and so yeah yeah, yeah, I mean, that was Greg Cook's approach at Stone, too. Yeah. yeah. People don't know they want bitter beer. I'm going to show them yeah. what bitter beer is about. Yeah. And well, so, like, and same so, thing like sour beer, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, sour. There's, there's, there's a lot of things out there. I mean, I didn't know that I wanted Belgian beer until somebody told me, you want Belgian beer. Yeah. I didn't know I want sours until that first time I cracked open Rodenbach Grand Cru, mm-hmm. and then next yeah. thing you know, what I thought was beer just was turned on its head. Yeah. And... It, it's kind of oh, how, how can I get more? <laughs> yeah, for your right. mind and your yeah, ass will follow. Yeah, exactly right. Well, we got a. Uh, you all have some um, a, a really cool uh, fest coming up. We'll talk about mm-hmm. that in a in a second. Let's take a short break. Let's take a short break because I'm sweating. I'm. It's good to see it's 98 <laughs> degrees in the here. Studio is hot again. again. I know it was cool for a few times. I and now we're so sweating depressed again. that I was like I feel the sweat rolling down my belly. I know it's that's that's the way yeah. it should be. That's, that's the way it should be. be. That's the way it should be. <laughs> Leave yeah. your shirt on, man. Yeah, shirt. And uh, for those on Facebook, we are broadcasting live. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to do a live broadcast. I have Facebook. no idea how it's working. I think it's on Matt Huber's I see, Facebook. I see, if, I see my phone on. I don't actually know it's doing anything. I well, checked a second ago. It looked like it was gone. Well, I don't understand right. how technology works, so I just push buttons and start hammering that's on how, it. That's how it works. I get feedback. You're listening to WLXU 93.9, Lexington Community Radio, Cockblock, the Coalition of Craft Beer Lovers of Kentucky. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Cockblock, the Coalition of Craft Beer Lovers of Kentucky. Uh, you got Matt here. You got Jeff over there. We have uh, Mr. Andrew Bishop with us again. Welcome back from Ethereal Brewing. We've been talking about their start, their uh, delicious sour beers that 20 years ago would have appalled everybody, but tastes have changed. And, they still uh, appall a few people. They still do appall Did people walk in sometimes, order something, and go, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's some people, especially because they look at like mm. the the ABV on it, so they find something, you know, like our blender vice. You got that nice four yeah. and a half, five percenter, and they're yeah. like, "I'll do that." And then you just see that they are not ready for something sour to hit their tongue. Yeah, and some people 
will give it a second and a third try, and then they'll be happy about it. Yeah. But then there's some people that almost spit it back into their glass. They want to they they like throw it in your face, do a spit take on Sarah, your face. Sir, there's something yeah. wrong with this beer. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's that. I have heard that a few times. Mm-hmm. Like something went wrong, and it's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. No, no. it's fine. <laughs> but I know what you mean. But you all, so you have uh, the Funky Farmhouse Fest coming yes. up very soon, which is dedicated to uh sour, sour beers sour. when is when is that coming yeah, up it's uh it's actually this coming sunday uh the 25th it's gonna be from uh noon to five okay uh we have some pretty neat things going on with that what, uh, kind, of, what kind of beers are you all gonna have well no okay now before i get into that the Ural space which uh we know most people that are familiar with ethereal and craft beer in lexington are familiar with your space you mm-hmm. don't have a whole ton of space no. and i was kind of curious about this. where are these people gonna go yeah where, <laughs> where are you gonna put all these people and you all have you all got like a, a unit another like draft unit or something like that right yeah we're, we're gonna put that out on the patio so okay. looking at the weather right now it's it's looking like it's going to be 81 degrees great 10 percent chance of rain okay uh partly cloudy so it looks like it's going to be perfect we'll be to, on the patio to have the patio so <clears throat> we did recently pick up a uh a small uh, draft system, just like a little cooler that has uh, five taps on it, and uh, we're going to have that out on the uh, the patio. Okay. So we are going to kind of, we'll be able to have more than one beer station. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're also thinking about possibly putting a jockey box, uh, some taps in the the back room. That's like the cooler with the, with yeah. the tap. The cooler with the everything. coils, uh, yeah. you know, kind of like festive ales. Sure, uh, yeah. So we're cool. looking at having maybe three different places where you can get beer. So they'll keep okay. the lines. It'll be able to spread it convenient. out a little bit. Um, Is it everything on at once, or are you staggering? It'll tapping? be. It'll probably be staggered. So we're looking at anywhere between twenty-one to twenty-five taps total. Okay. So we've got the sixteen in the tap room, uh, five out on the patio, and possibly four in the back room. Oh, um, so, I'm gonna have so much fun. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. And, yeah. and I think, I'll be there at noon. Yeah. I think we. Money. May uh, clean up some of the uh, the brewery area so that kind we'd be able to move back, too. back yeah. a little bit more. Uh, okay. Maybe move Take some, some of the tables, tables out. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. And get, make a little bit more space, but also allow people that you know normally you'd have to stop at the gate, but maybe allow people to kind of flow back there a little yeah. bit to help take care of some of that. But being able to have the patio to that level uh, with it, with that kind of weather. Uh, I think really we nice. should be able to uh, to accommodate the people that we have coming in. So, what kind of breweries do you have coming in that are uh, going to be putting stuff on tap? We we have I think seventeen actually. Uh, Mirror Twin, uh, who hasn't opened yet, uh, I think they just became our eighteenth outside ah, of us. So they're there ready go. to go. Nice. They've got some brood. Ready well, to go. They, right. they, uh, if our of, phone was working, we could call Derek DeFranco right now. It is like, working. I just don't. Yeah, but you, we don't know how to use it. I don't know how to. I know the number. Well, the number's on the wall. Yeah, Anyways. but I, I got your number. This is much. <laughs> this is much ado about nothing. Yeah, Jenny, Jenny. <laughs> so you got eighteen now, huh? I, it looks like we have eighteen. Uh, against the grain, against twin. the grain. Lots of local people. We, we tried to keep. Love. We tried to keep it for the most part. Country uh, boy, Kentucky. Yeah. So we do have uh, West Six Country Boy Blue Stallion uh, from Lexington. Um, and then we do have like a uh, dry ground. Dry, dry ground cool. made a sour. Great. Uh, we have uh, Jarfly. Jarfly. Yes. Yeah. Um, they killed the festivals with that blueberry. That's what you that's, 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 that's the one yeah. we'll be having. Yeah, in. that's so, a nice cool one. man. So we we definitely we wanted to let people know that it was a very strict uh, strict guidelines to be able to be a part of this. Uh, we didn't want uh, you know somebody trying to send an IPA to a funky farmhouse. So yeah. it had to be some sort of funk with uh, with Britannomyces. Uh, some sort of farmhouse saison style beer or something sour. So as long as you could hit one of those three categories. What was yeah. the um, what was the reception from Kentucky Brewers when you approached them and said, "Hey, we want to do this festival. Do you want to contribute something?" Were they pretty enthusiastic? Yeah, it, it seemed like uh, you know for the most part, you know, I, I remember talking with Braxton. Uh, they were really excited to be able to to send some beer down uh, for us. Um, so I, a lot of people were very happy. Uh, some of them may just have wanted a little bit more heads up. Yeah. We, we tried to get out in front of it and let people know about three months in advance yeah. that we were going to be doing it so you could try to fit it into your schedule. Mm-hmm. But the way that a lot of these breweries are expanding right now, which is definitely a very good thing, yeah. it's always uh, hard to find time. They're getting their flagships to brewed, swing something yeah, in they're there. They're taking up space, and they have to find something in the production schedule. So some of yeah. these beers yeah. some of these beers are ones that they just happen to have, whether it's the blueberry on from Jarfly. They didn't yeah. brew it for us, but they had it. Yeah. Um, 
where some of these uh, these other breweries, it's either a variation of a beer that they already have, or it just happens to to fit the style. Yeah. Um, so I I think really the ones that are going to be debuting, we've got a beer that we're going to be debuting for it, is and then Mirror Twin. Uh, this uh, it's be the first opportunity for uh, people to try what they're doing. And how cool that one brewery in town helps another brewery launch its first beer for yeah. Which yeah, didn't just, they? Didn't they? It's great. Don't they do like the block party? Did they not put some beer out for the? I block thought they party? did not. I don't, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I, I thought they just I, sold I shirts make, and or gave away shirts and hats or something like that. It. Do you know what kind of beer they're putting on yet? Or um, I know I they're pretty new. I think it's a to sour that. wheat, but okay. I I don't want to. Yeah, lead people. You don't want to. You don't want to say it live on the air. <laughs> oh no, too late. I, I don't want to commit. I don't want to commit. It's already on cock block right now. <laughs> yeah, and people are already complaining. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what what other kind of uh, like what are some of the the beers that people should get excited about? Um, uh, or we, like, and what's yours that you're going to be putting on? Ours. Uh, Not that they're mutually exclusive, but <laughs> <laughs> right? uh, ours ours is a, a really neat one. We have a uh, hibiscus saison that we did. Okay. Um, it's got a really neat color to it. It almost looks like uh, Hawaiian Punch. Cool. Uh, I the, love Hawaiian Punch. The hibiscus really influenced the color on that. We okay. used uh, about two and a half pounds per barrel okay. uh, of hibiscus for that. I think it was around 28 uh, pounds total. Okay. Um, cool. And then we used uh, Huel Melon hops. Uh, so it, it's got a really, it, it's not quite tropical fruit flavor, but at the same what time, kind of it's melon? got. Uh, Huel Melon, it's a, mm-hmm. uh, a German hop. Oh. You don't know that? Uh-uh, I don't think so. You have a beer show. Huh? You have a craft beer show. <laughs> yeah, I told you I don't like beer. <laughs> anyway, We, we use on. that uh, for our grisette as well. So it doesn't okay. have like a, a huge influential flavor. It is a German style hop, so mm-hmm. it's not getting in there really big and bold, but... Uh, now, I was going to bring some in until we remembered that we are at a, a school. school. Yeah. <laughs> we may not that would be funny. Be like, I'm here. And all the kids are like running past you. We may not drink beer here openly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, cool. it's it's a really neat looking beer. Um, it almost looks like a, a red zen or, or something mm-hmm. like that. Okay. It's really, really dark ruby red, but it's yeah. also very clean looking as yeah, well. Yeah, fantastic. Cool. Um, got a, a really nice Saison flavor to it. We let uh-huh. it get nice and warm, get a lot of those uh, esters and phenols yeah. going in there. And it's it's looking like it's right around 8.5% as well. Wow. Okay. So it, it is kind, kind of a heavy hitter for it Saison. It is kind yeah. of it's on a big Saison. Saison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What, what kind of stuff from some of these uh, from some of these guest taps? From some of these guest taps, um, let's see, we've got probably West Six is probably, put you on the spot, probably you can't think of any. Yeah, <laughs> Sixfold from West Six. Uh, West Six is doing their summer. Oh, the, Ooh, the, the summer the great, sour. I Some, think it was the, the summer sour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. They've got their summer mm-hmm. sour coming. There's a uh, a passion fruit. Uh, I'm gonna say passion fruit vice beer from uh, Braxton. Okay. Cool. We have uh, trips from uh, Rheingeist. It's mm-hmm. a great one. I think we're doing the. Uh, the pear sour uh, from Tin Man. Tin Man. Okay. The Weld. Uh, yeah, the Weld yeah, series yeah, yeah, pear. Yeah. Okay, cool. Think, or actually, I'm sorry. We have the strawberry for that one. Okay. Um, and then um, the jar fly, we have the uh, the blueberry saison that they did. Yeah. Uh, and then some of these, uh, we have uh, Apocalypse. They're sending down, I, I forget what it was called off the top of my head. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it'll be great. I mean, it'd be great for the local beer nerds who are already into sour beer. But if there are also people buying tickets who are like, I'm just interested in trying them out. Yeah. Then that's where it gets really cool because they get educated to all these diff- different breweries they may not have tried. But then this right. style. And the style yeah. is not homogenous. All these beers you name, and they're all very, very different take from trips to this blueberry saison. Yeah. I mean, you're getting all different kinds of variations of what we're calling sour yeah. beer. Yeah, it's nice to see some, yeah. you know, nice to see an actual event focus right. just on that. Kind it's not of just all red, acidic. Yeah, you're not just getting Flemish sours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. There's, a, there's a really good variety here, it seems. Yeah, yeah, and that's really what we wanted was because, you know, when somebody thinks of sour, somebody thinks of funky, there's usually one thing that sticks out, and we really wanted to have an opportunity to show people that just like IPAs, it's it can either be really bitter, yeah. it can be really that's aromatic. Right. There's there's a yeah. lot of variety. There's a craft to the that. sour. Yeah. And so this, we wanted to give an opportunity to a showcase the style, but b showcase the breweries and your interpretation of what those flavors should be. 
Yeah, well, that's cool. That's coming up on the 20, 25th, right? Yep, that, that is this Sunday. This Sunday. Uh, yeah. We are. We do still have some tickets available. Yeah, check out uh, what Facebook page. Our Facebook page will be the best place to yeah. to get information on yeah, that. Cool. And we have a, a really neat uh, six ounce uh, stemmed glass that that's comes right. With that yeah. Ticket. I've, yeah, I've, you saw the glass. Right? Yeah, and I actually I posted it. I think I, yeah. uh, I think you were there. I posted a picture of it to uh, the Cockblock Instagram. Yep. Feed. I'm pretty sure. I'm What's still using it. I'm still trying to figure out how to use Instagram. What's so the name of the Cockblock Instagram? It's Cockblock. Oh, okay. <laughs> C O C B L O K. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's really exciting. Check out uh, everybody. Check out their Facebook page for more info. And you got a. Um, well, you got. I see you got your. We'll your, take a little. You're queued up there. We're at that time for a We're, little break. It's about that time. <laughs> it's about that time, people. Yeah. On Cockblock, the Coalition of Craft Beer Lovers of Kentucky on 93.9 FM. Welcome back to Cockblock, the Coalition of Craft Beer Lovers of Kentucky on 93.9 WLXU. My name is Matthew. Hello. And that's Jeff. I'm Jeff. That's what he's. <laughs> yeah, he takes forever to say that's Jeff. <laughs> And uh, we have Andrew Bishop here with us from Ethereal Brewing talking about events coming up, beers coming up. Lots of things uh, coming up at Ethereal, it sounds like. Yeah, and I have my Ethereal hat on, and I swear it was just by <laughs> happenstance because we literally called him in here like five minutes before the show. Be like, hey, what are you doing right now? Come on down. So, We're professionals. Uh, yeah, we, <laughs> we planned everything out at least five minutes ahead of time. <laughs> but uh, we got the Funky Farmhouse Fest. <laughs> I can't ever say that. Coming up on the 25th. Uh, check out Ethereal. Facebook page for more information. That's going to be really exciting. And you all have a couple more, or at least, yeah, you got a couple more events coming up. Uh, yeah. Tell us about those. So, uh, with with us not doing a lot of German style loggers, uh, you know, we haven't really gotten into any kind of loggering whatsoever. Uh, yeah, not using logger yeast. Um, we wanted to be able to participate in Oktoberfest, but we kind of wanted to put our own little spin on it. Uh, so we wanted to do something called uh, Oktoberfest. So we want to have an opportunity to put some beers out there that uh, we've used some different different kinds of oak with. So okay. we've taken we do have uh, a, kind of a, a brand new beer that we're going to be releasing for Oktoberfest. Um, going to keep that just a little under wraps. Okay. Until till it gets a little okay. bit closer. We're looking to do uh, just, just a little teaser there. Okay. <laughs> a little teaser. Yeah. But we are going to kind of mess around with uh, some. Don't of tell our... us what the beer is, but exactly what kind of beer is it? <laughs> <laughs> and what's it called? <laughs> yeah. But don't tell us. Yeah. So anyway, so you got tricky you, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing. So uh, Oktoberfest, you got a bunch of different types of barrels. So we're gonna. Well, we're using uh, spirals, so for some of oh, these, okay, I got you. for some of these, we're going to have some uh, some new Tap Zero releases where we're going to uh, get our corny keg, maybe take some of the Wonderland, see what it's like with white oak, uh, take uh, our normal saison, uh, use a different oak. So we're looking at uh, a bunch of different oak spirals that will be able to influence some of our regular beers just to see what that oak uh, can do uh, as far as contributing flavors, mm-hmm. uh, as well as. Uh, have this other beer uh, that we're going to release. That's kind of uh, okay. the big special mm-hmm. one for it. So we, we're not trying to make a, you know anything near as big as the Funky Farmhouse. Uh, we just want to have a little fun. Uh, you know, give sure. people a reason to visit us during Oktoberfest. Yeah, even though we're not brewing up a, a Mersin or anything like that. No, that'll be really cool. And it, this isn't like a ticketed thing, is it? No, it's just no, kind of like is, we got a bunch of stuff on. Come check us out. Yeah, this is just going to be kind of a hey, we'll throw something up on Facebook okay. that this Tap Zero is getting tapped. And this I haven't is seen Tap without. Zero in ages. It's uh, it's been a little bit tough to to try to keep up with yeah. the, the small batch of stuff course. but now that we have uh you know matt linsky working with us in, in the lab area okay. uh he's going to be doing some some uh, small batch brewing right. on the brew magic okay. and uh we do have uh our newest member with um Andrew Horn yes. is our assistant brewer, so he's going to be doing some stuff. Cool. So now that we've got a few more hands back there, you know, we, we got busy trying to get beer out uh, through our distributors, get beer to, into more hands uh, in Louisville, northern Kentucky. We, I saw you guys are doing a takeover at Against the Green. We have a tomorrow, actually. Oh, yeah. tomorrow. Okay. We have a kind of a, a meet the, the brewers. It's during Louisville Craft Beer Week. Uh, Against the Green has invited us up there to, cool. to have a small tap takeover. and. That'll hang out, talk beer with people. Excellent. And you also have a collab with Against the Grain, correct? We do. We do. We, uh, we're we working on a collab with them uh, for the uh, the KGB, uh, which is our Kentucky... So you're working for the enemy government now is what you're saying. Yeah. 
<laughs> that was quick, man. Yeah, yeah. Good job, I, well, man. like you said, I'm on to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got, then pun. security be waiting outside for you. They'll mm-hmm. ask you to your next destination. I was wondering what those black suburbans are. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what um, are you all working on? With, with the uh, the Kentucky Guild of Brewers, uh, we actually worked with uh, Kentucky Proud, mm-hmm. with the uh, Department of Agriculture, and there's about six or eight or uh, about four groups of two breweries a piece that are working together using a uh, Kentucky Proud product. Yeah, uh, we uh, we got hooked up with Against the Grain and uh, Mulberry Farms, which is in Shelbyville, and we're making a kettle soured peach saison. Mm, okay. And so uh, we met up with uh, Amelia, who is the head brewer at the pub or okay. the. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the the pub at Slugger Field. Yeah, uh, oh, up against yeah. the grain. And so we sat down with her and we talked about uh, some recipe ideas, and we settled on uh, kind of a slightly acidic kettle souring, and then uh, the the saison yeast that we use. It really already kind of almost has a little bit of that peach influence, but we have uh, about three hundred pounds of peaches uh, going into this uh, cool. this batch of beer. That sounds good. And this is, uh, you had mentioned earlier, we were talking, uh, there's, there's multiple people. This is kind of a, a, an event from the Kentucky Guild of Brewers that are putting together. Yes. So is there going to be like, uh, a, a, like an actual release, uh, or is, is like each brewery going to kind of do their own thing with their beers? Is that the way it's going to work? They're going to kind of do their own thing with the releases. Um, mainly because, a lot of these uh, ingredients are very specific to your harvest times and, yeah. and things like that. So um, it, it was really hard to try to coordinate like a, a single day where everybody has the same beers going out. Of course, yeah. So between between the groups, uh, you know, we, we brewed this peach saison at our place. We'll be sending half the batch up to Against the Grain, and we'll both release it on the same days. And then... The other breweries that are doing it with their ingredients, they'll be releasing them on their same day. Okay. But as far as having everybody do it at the same time, uh, just the uh, the seasons to be able to mm-hmm. to get the the produce, yeah. uh, it's just it's really tough to try. Do you have to get a time frame? Up. Time frame on that period? <clears throat> um, I think we're actually uh, we're putting the peaches in uh, either tomorrow or Wednesday. So I'd say maybe about a week or so after that. So we we might be about a week and a half out for that one. Cool, oh, great. Okay. Soon. So it's yeah, it's right around side. the corner. Yeah, I like all this. I'll, I've liked all the sours coming out of out of your guys's. I appreciate so it. So that's yeah, that's that's exciting stuff. It um, definitely helps to have uh, to have somebody that knows how to run a lab. With, yeah, uh, with Matt Linsky back there. There's, oh yeah. Like I said earlier, there's there's a lot of stuff that we mm. wish we would have paid more attention to yeah. in, in high school and college as far as <laughs> stay in school, chemistry yeah. and biology. Yeah, your ninth grade teacher is like listening to this right now. It's like I told you, Sonny. I told you I had a bounds an equation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool, man. That's a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Oh, and uh, uh, the we had talked about uh, another thing. Is it Swayze Days? Swayze Days. Swayze Days. Or yes. D-A-Z, I can't remember. The that's tribute a, to Patrick Swayze. Yeah, <laughs> where we do nothing but play. Patrick Swayze movies, right? All day at the brewery. Movies, costumes, Maybe. music. So this is uh, this has kind of been, I guess, against the grain uh, brewery out of Louisville. Their answer to um, Swansea Day. Swansea Day from Kent. If you want to say answer, yeah, it's it's their answer with the like, back of their hand. There's a more of a rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's something that uh, Against the Grain got started with. Uh, they they weren't too thrilled with how exclusive Swansea Day did was. Did they get looked over, or did they? You would have to ask Sam. Okay. And Sam obviously would tell you. I'm sure he would. But he, he, yeah, he initiated the whole event he, behind. He him, wants but. beer to be able to get to the consumers, and uh, I know that Against the Grain was not too thrilled about locations that you had. Like this beer was oh, only yeah. distributed in certain places. Yeah. And and had so limited. much of it. Yeah, so with was Zwanzi Day. You know, you had to be at the right place at the right time, yep. and you probably had to know somebody as well. Yeah. But uh, they wanted to do something in the against the grain manner of saying, "Hey, we want to get beer to as many people as possible and have as much fun with it as possible." So they wanted something that was close to to Swansea, so they picked Swayze. <laughs> and uh, every year they they pick kind of a uh, a style guideline that it's going to be. So okay. something different this year. Yeah, so last year we had uh, you know your your creek version. Mm-hmm. Uh, this creek, year, K R I E K I E K. Good job. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> cherry. Uh, yeah, cherry. It's, it's like a cherry, it's the, cherry the Belgian, Belgian sour. Version yeah. of cherry. Yeah, yeah. and uh, this year it's uh, it's a sour brown. All right. Okay. Um, 
And so yeah, every year they uh, they kind of pick a style, they pick a name, and then so there's uh, a name for it already, or is it still secret? There there is a name. I think it's like uh, Two Wong Brew. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they're gonna get some flack on that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like not that like they have for like any other beer name they've come up <laughs> Too with. Too long. That's uh that's par for the course. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. Here although, comes the, uh... although with, uh, speaking with Amelia uh, from Against the Grain last week, I think it got registered as Two Wang Brew. Oh, Ooh, Two so Wangs. We'll, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll okay. see how it, it actually ends up okay. hitting the market. But, uh, cool. you know, they, they push it so that they're not the only ones producing the beer. They tell you the style. They send it out through uh, the KGB networks. Yes. And <laughs> we will be to brew yes. that beer. Yeah. <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> yes, Boris. Yeah, that's Amelia's real name. Yeah. That's a trigger word that sets her off. Sam Goose is that. really Boris. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, that's cool. So when's that coming up? Uh, that is on the 30th. Okay, cool. And so, uh, awesome. 30th, so September 30th, which is also back craft back. writing. Yes. It and is. then October 1st is onesie day. That's probably why it's the 30th. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. So, we so got a they, lot of good they stuff send that out and they tell everybody, hey, brew your version of yeah. this style. Mm-hmm. And then everybody names it the same thing. It's just two wang brew from ethereum well yeah there you we'll go. have uh, 200 people at craft writing who will be told <laughs> that they can get this beer at ethereal yeah you have all the versions on at ethereal on well, that day? anyone that we can get our hands on yeah. uh we definitely There's will because y'all did about strange. two or three versions at once i think yeah i think we year. had eight balls Creek. version yeah. uh we had against the grand's version versions. and then our version that. yeah yeah, that's got to be. There's got to be some distribution issues there, I guess. Sometimes, depending on who all, mm. who all they go. Who all, how many breweries did it? Yeah, and how many people remembered to get it to the right place? The right <laughs> yeah, or make it at all. Y- you find out that uh, when you're drinking the beer while you're producing it, it uh, you, you tend miss to forget to continue things. to make it. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, what was that? Right. As much as it sounds like a match made in heaven, Brandon and I found out early on in our brewing yeah. that uh, if you drink while you're producing it, you miss hop additions. You, yeah. you miss who the thought? A lot. Yeah. Of stuff. <laughs> you don't say. That's crazy. <laughs> it sounds like they go hand in hand. <laughs> making beer, yeah. so you're drinking beer. Yeah. Well, that's cool, yeah, man. We got a lot of good stuff yeah, coming. There's a lot of good stuff going on at the real. Yeah, we appreciate you coming in Chilling and divulging all this Thank information. Thank you guys for. Uh, yeah, and if you guys aren't into sour beers, then uh, you best get you into it because that's the wave of the future. <laughs> I've seen the future, and it is sour. It is sour. <laughs> yeah. So and I guess we've. Oh, yeah. So grateful we didn't have any stupid sound bites today. I had so many. I just want to give Jeff a, I've got, a, a thank um, you and a shout out for I've that. I've got the George Costanza <laughs> one. I've got the beer one. I've got the Hanna Barbera one all ready to go. But uh, yeah. I'll save that for next time. Yeah, you got to make sure that they're all like poorly timed too. That's the, oh, that's, that's the that's key. How... Yeah, he's like, hold on a second, <laughs> wait for four seconds until that's, I queue up the sound bite, that, and that's how it works. it's already <laughs> the moment's lost. The moment's lost. But now it's gonna play. It was so even now because my uh, page... <laughs> he's he's been trying to queue one up for thirty well, minutes now. The page we do everything here off of a high-tech <laughs> computer it's like some computer we bought stuff from. as we wait for a page to load on the internet yeah. this is actually my computer from uh but, 1992 um, you, back in business, baby. I, I have no idea what that even said he you connects no the internet and he goes <laughs> oh yeah and just to clear up uh when I said I didn't really want to... poorly timed music soundbite what? exactly when I said that I didn't want to commit to uh to what Mirror Twin was sending, I, I did get a text message from uh, from Brandon there saying that it was uh, it's a saison. Uh, okay, it's it's not uh, a wheat beer. Like okay, I, perfect. I that's earlier. that's why we live broadcast. Oh, no. All right, I quit. quit. He had to bring back the sound bites. I thought you we got a whole show with that. It Unbelievable. Gonna, right. you, you kind of. I did. I you kind of, I, I, you kind of I asked told me to do it. So, right. Um, all right, Lexington Community Radio, ninety three point nine. WLXUFM, Cockblocked, Coalition of Crap Beer Lovers of Kentucky. It's been another great show. We've said a lot, maybe too much. But uh, tune in next week.